Welcome to Boulevard 40, home of the Bible Reading Party and thebibleinoneyear.com, an online resource to encourage everyone to read the Bible. It's week 40 of reading the Bible every day. Today's scheduled reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapters 37 through 39, according to my study guide, which is The Woman's Guide to Reading the Bible in a Year by author Diane Stortz. I'm using the New Believer's Bible compact version, and it's the New Living Translation. If you want to hear the Bible read to you daily, subscribe to Boulevard 40, turn on the notifications to be alerted each time a new video is released. Isaiah chapter 37, Hezekiah seeks the Lord's help. When King Hezekiah heard their report, he tore his clothes and put on burlap and went into the temple of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the court secretary, and the leading priests, all dressed in burlap, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz. They told him, this is what King Hezekiah says, today is a day of trouble, insult, and disgrace. It is like when a child is ready to be born but the mother has no strength to deliver the baby. But perhaps the Lord, your God, has heard the Assyrian chief of staff sent by the king to defy the living God and will punish him for his words. Oh, pray for those of us who are left. After King Hezekiah's officials delivered the king's message to Isaiah, the prophet replied, Say to your master, This is what the Lord says. Do not be disturbed by this blasphemous speech against me from the Assyrian king's messengers. Listen, I myself will move against him, and the king will receive a message that he is needed at home. So he will return to his land, where I will have him killed with a sword. Meanwhile, the Assyrian chief of staff left Jerusalem and went to consult the king of Assyria, who had left Lachish and was attacking Libna. Soon afterward, King Sennacherib received word that King Tiraka of Ethiopia was leading an army to fight against him. Before leaving to meet the attack, he sent messengers back to Hezekiah in Jerusalem with this message. This message is for King Hezekiah of Judah. Don't let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you with promises that Jerusalem would not be captured by the king of Assyria. You know perfectly well what the king of kings of Assyria have done wherever they have gone. They have completely destroyed everyone who stood in their way. Why should you be any different? Have the gods of other nations rescued them, such nations as Gozan, Haran, Rezef, and the people of Eden who were in Tel Esar? My predecessors destroyed them all. What happened to the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad? What happened to the kings of Sepharvaim, Hena, and Eva? After Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed this prayer before the Lord. O Lord of heaven's armies, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubim. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. Bend down, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all these nations, and they have thrown the gods of these nations into the fire and burned them, but of course the Assyrians could destroy them. They were not gods at all, only idols of wood and stone shaped by human hands. Now, O oh Lord our God, rescue us from his power, then all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O oh Lord our God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Because you prayed about King Sennacherib of Assyria, the Lord has spoken this word against him. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head in derision as you flee. Whom have you been defying and ridiculing? 
against whom did you raise your voice at whom did you look with such haughty eyes it was the holy one of israel by your messengers you have defied the lord you have said with my many chariots i have conquered the highest mountains yes the remotest peaks of lebanon i have cut down its tallest cedars and its finest cypress trees i have reached its farthest heights and explored its deepest forest i have dung wells in many foreign lands and refreshed myself with their water with the sole of my foot i stopped up all the rivers of egypt but have you not heard i decided this long ago long ago i planned it and now i am making it happen i plan for you to crush fortified cities into heaps of rubble that is why their people have so little power and so frightened and confused they are weak as grass as easily trampled as tender green shoots they are like grass sprouting on a housetop scorched before it can grow lush and tall but i know you well where you stay and when you come and go i know the way you have raged against me and because of your raging against me and your arrogance which i have heard for myself i will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth i will make you return by the same road on which you came then isaiah said to hezekiah here is the proof that what i say is true this year you will eat only what grows up by itself and next year you will eat what springs up from that but in the third year you will plant crops and harvest them you will tend vineyards and eat their fruit and you who are left in judah who have escaped the ravages of the siege will put roots down in your own soil and grow up and flourish for a remnant of my people will spread out from jerusalem a group of survivors from mount zion the passionate commitment of the lord of heaven's armies will make this happen and this is what the lord says about the king of assyria his armies will not enter jerusalem they will not even shoot an arrow at it they will not march outside its gates with their shields nor build banks of earth against its walls the king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came he will not enter this city says the lord for my own honor and for the sake of my servant david i will defend this city and protect it that night the angel of the lord went out to the assyrian camp and killed one hundred eighty five thousand assyrian soldiers when the surviving assyrians woke up the next morning they found corpses everywhere then king sennacherib of assyria broke camp and returned to his own land he went home to his capital of nineveh and stayed there one day while he was worshiping in the temple of his god nisroch his sons ad remelech and sharazir killed him with their swords they then escaped to the land of ararat and another son isarhaddon became the next king of assyria chapter 38 hezekiah's sickness and recovery about that time hezekiah became deathly ill and the prophet isaiah son of amoth went to visit him he gave the king this message this is what the lord says set your affairs in order for you are going to die you will not recover from this illness when hezekiah heard this he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the lord remember O oh lord how i have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly always doing what pleases you then he broke down and wept bitterly then this message came to isaiah from the lord go back to hezekiah and tell him this is what the lord the god of your ancestors david says i have heard your prayer and seen your tears i will add 15 years to your life and I will rescue you and the city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend the city. And this is the sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he promised. I will call the sun's shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. So the shadow on the sundial moved backward ten steps. When King Hezekiah was well again, he wrote this poem. 
I said in the prime of my life, must I now enter the place of the dead? Am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? I said, never again will I see the Lord God while still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in this world. My life has been blown away like a shepherd's tent in a storm. It has been cut short as when a weaver cuts cloth from a loom. Suddenly my life was over. I waited patiently all night, but I was torn apart as though by lions. Suddenly my life was over. Delirious, I chattered like a swallow or a crane, and then I moaned like a mourning dove. My eyes grew tired of looking to heaven for help. I am in trouble, Lord, help me. But what could I say, for he himself sent this sickness. Now I will walk humbly throughout my years because of this anguish I have felt. Lord, your discipline is good, for it leads to life and health. You restore my health and allow me to live. Yes, this anguish was good for me, for you have rescued me from death and forgiven all my sins, for the dead cannot praise you. They cannot raise their voices in praise. Those who go down to the grave can no longer hope in your faithfulness only the living can praise you as i do today each generation tells of your faithfulness to the next think of it the lord is ready to heal me i will sing his praises with instruments every day of my life in the temple of the lord isaiah has said to hezekiah's servants make an ointment from figs and spread it over the boil and hezekiah will recover and Hezekiah had asked, What sign will prove that I will go to the temple of the Lord? Chapter 39 Envoys from Babylon Soon after this, Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift. He had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick and that he had recovered. Hezekiah was delighted when the Babylonian envoys with the uh, with the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses the silver the gold the spices and the aromatic oils he also took them to see his armory and showed them everything in his royal treasuries there was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them then Isaiah the prophet went to king Hezekiah and asked him what did those men want? Where did they come from? Hezekiah replied, They came from the distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? asked Isaiah. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I own, all my royal treasuries. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen to this message from the Lord of Heaven's armies. The time is coming when everything in your palace, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now, will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, this message you have given me from the Lord is good, for the king was thinking at least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. This concludes today's reading. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up to help it become discoverable and suggested to others. You could also share it. I invite you to visit www.thebibleinoneyear, that's the number one, for helpful resources to encourage everyone to read the Bible. Links to the Bible I'm using, my study guide, um, the website, and other cool Bible-related channels are in the description below, so be sure to check them out. I look forward to responding to your feedback and questions in the comments section, and I do Thank you for taking time to listen to me read the Bible to you. See you in the next video.